In this presentation, we will see how to generate random numbers in R. Or if you're being more careful, you'll talk about pseudo-random numbers, since computers don't ever do anything that's truly random. In line 3 of the code below, we have an assignment statement. So we have my underscore rands. That's just a variable name that we've made up. We are using the sort of uh, less than dash, the arrow notation for assigning. And then we're getting the output of the runif function. Uh, it has three arguments. Uh, we are going to get the R is for random and the unif is for uniform. We are going to get random uniform numbers. The first argument, the 100, is that we are going to get 100 of these numbers. And then they're going to be uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. So here we see the result down in the console. So my underscore rands was repeated so that we would not just assign the values, but that they would be sort of echoed out in the console. And we see that we have a vector or an array with 100 elements or components and they are random numbers distributed between 0 and 1. The 100 uniformly distributed random numbers were assigned to the variable my underscore rands. So my underscore rands is a distribution of numbers, a vector of numbers, and we can get the statistics for that vector. So we can get the mean, the standard deviation, the median, the the first quartile, the third quartile, and that's what's shown here. So we haven't, we're not assigning them to any variables in this case. We're just sort of doing the calculations and spitting out the result. So line 14 of the code before is using the else if function, and it has three arguments. The first argument is a condition my underscore rands greater than or equal to 0.5. My rands, you recall, is a vector. So it was a set of 100 things. So it's really not a single condition, but sort of 100 conditions. So it asks as if each uh, component of the vector, if each element of the array, it asks individually, is it greater than or uh, equal to one half? And then it's producing, if, if that condition is true, it will produce, in this case, a capital H, and otherwise it will produce a capital T. And so it's doing that for each element of the array, so it's creating an array of H's and T's, and presumably sort of half, half the time H's and half the time T's. And then in line 15, we just repeat the word, and that gets assigned, sorry, the if else gets assigned to uh, a variable called coin, so coins is a vector of h's and t's, and then in line 15 we just repeat the word coins, which sort of echoes the results down there in the console. Here we show another way to simulate a coin toss. So we're going to start with a vector just of the possible outcomes, so we're calling it outcomes, this is in line 18, and we're assigning to outcomes a uh, a vector which contains the possible outcomes of H and T. So it's using the little C, the concatenate function, and it's making a vector that has two possible values, H and T. Next, we're using the sample uh, function, and it has uh, open sample, open parenthesis, and then it has three arguments. The first is outcomes, so this that's the H and the T, the two possible outcomes we can get. And next comes the argument of 100, saying that we want 100 of them. And replace equals true means that if I have uh, pulled out, if I have an outcome of an H, then I replace it and I can get another H. So we need that in this case, since there were only two possibilities, and but we want 100 of them, we certainly need to replace. And then the on line 20 there, we just repeat coins too. So sample, the output of the sample function was uh, assigned to a variable called coins two, and then coins two was repeated on line 20. So the results are echoed out down in the console.
The next function we're using, you can see down in the console, is the table function. So we ask table to act to have an argument of coins2. Coins2 was this large vector of t's and h's. And then what it does is does the counting for you. So the result of table coins2 was that there were 53 heads and 47 tails. So I want to explain this replace true or replace false argument that occurs in the sample function by using two different examples from the lottery. So one game in the lottery is pick five. So you, you have the numbers, the regular old digits, zero through nine, and you're going to pick five of them. But two of the numbers can be the same. So you say replace equals true. This is going to allow for duplications. So you pull the first number, uh, and it's a, uh, down in the example you see down in the console, it was a nine, and then you pick the next number and it was a seven, and then you picked a five. But when you picked, each time you picked the nine and the seven and the five, those numbers were put back into what you're choosing from, so you could choose them again. And you can see that down there, that five was chosen twice. So it, it allows for duplication. So a different game is cash five as opposed to pick five. In cash five, you've got uh, possible numbers between one and 43, and you are picking five of them. In this case, the replace is false. So once you pull a number below like six, then it cannot be pulled again. And so the replace is false. You will find no duplication in these results. So now we're going to simulate some dice. And so we're going to use the sample function. And again, it has three arguments. We're in line 34 in the code up there. So the first argument was the possible choices. So the possible choices when you roll a die is a one through six. So you see that there in the one colon six that corresponds to the numbers one through six. Uh, then the second argument is how many of these things we want. So we're going to ask for a hundred samples, a hundred rolling of the die. And then we're going to say replace equals true. So that when we've rolled a number, say we've rolled a three, we are allowed to roll it again in a, in a later sample. And then in line 35, we are asking to table the results. So the sample, the output of the sample was assigned to the variable dice in line 34 and then in line 35 we're using the table function which is counting up the frequencies of all the outcomes. So as you recall we can make a fast histogram of a, a set of data just by using the function hist. So here is hist of dice. Dice was our sample of rolling uh, the simulating the die uh, 100 times and here we've made a histogram of that but it's sort of awkwardly spaced. The one and two are sort of near each other and, the, and then the others are spread out. So we're, we want to learn to have maybe a little more control of our histograms, which we'll do next. So to make a cleaner looking histogram, we've added here a second argument called breaks. So the possible outcomes were one, two, three, four, five, six. We've gone a little bit lower than the lowest value. So instead of a one, we're putting in a half. And instead of the highest value, six, we're putting in six half. And so we're making our breaks 0 0.5 colon 6.5. And then this gave us sort of a nice distribution of the columns without any odd gaps.